Visit svgcuts.com slash blog for tons of free SVGs, video tutorials, inspirational ideas, and the lowest price on Sure Cuts A Lot software. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss the properties panel. The first thing I'm going to show you is the properties panel when you don't have anything selected, whether it be an SVG file or some text. Okay, so just to show you, I'm going to put a heart on the mat. As you can see here, when we have this heart selected, we have some additional options here. Now notice when I take and I deselect it by clicking anywhere on the mat, we've got some basic options here in this properties panel. The first one being your mat size. You can select 6x12, 12x12, or 24x12. And then you've got your orientation. So depending on how your cutting machine is set up on your desk, you may want to change the orientation to match that. So let's take a look here. You've got vertical and you've got horizontal. Now let me zoom out for just a second here so you can see this. If I do a 6x12, okay, and if I change it from horizontal to vertical, and that just kind of gives you a better idea of where your element is, and, you know, depending on how you're going to be feeding it into your machine. So it's not a big deal. You can do it either way. There's no wrong or right way. Okay, and you also have the units option here. You can change it from inches to centimeters if you use the metric system. And then you can zoom in or zoom out using this zoom feature here. Okay, and you can also zoom in or zoom out using the zoom in tool here. Okay, and you can actually zoom in further or zoom out further using these tools here than these values here. These are just some predefined values and these will actually allow you to zoom in a lot closer or a lot further out. As you can see here, this is zoomed at 50%, but I can actually zoom out further by grabbing this magnifying glass with a minus sign and just clicking on my mat and that's going to zoom me out. Okay, in addition to that, you also have the option to name the current page Okay, and we'll get into that a little bit more in a later video, but we can name this heart, and you'll see here that when we hit enter, this little tab right here changes to what we typed in here, and we can change the color here as well, and this is just used to color coordinate certain elements or just to help you identify the different pages or tabs, and we'll discuss that in more detail in a more advanced video. Okay, now while we're looking at these options, I just want to show you that it's also possible to change your mat size under the cutter option here and you can select your mat size here okay and you can also click on view to zoom in or zoom out okay so you've got different options or different ways of doing certain things okay now let me show you what the properties panel looks like when you have an element selected okay so I'm gonna take a star I'm gonna put it on my mat and you'll notice now that I've got this element highlighted there are a lot more options here Okay, the first thing you'll notice is the X and Y coordinate. And the X and Y coordinates help you accurately place your objects in a specific place on your mat. So let's say, for example, that I want to make sure that this star starts to cut on the 2 inch mark. Okay, so I can just go here and type in 2 and hit enter on my keyboard. And now you'll notice that the leftmost part of this star lines up with the 2 right here. Okay. I've actually found the X and Y coordinate option very useful when you find an SVG file and when you import it, it's actually so large that you can't even find this handle here. And I'm going to try to illustrate that for you. Okay, now you see that? I can't grab it anymore. Okay, so if you happen to accidentally move it off the mat, take a look at your X and Y coordinates here. They're in the negatives now. If I take and change the X and Y coordinates to 0, 0, it'll place the star back on the mat where I can actually click on it and drag it and move it around. So basically the X and Y coordinates are going to help you be more precise with where you place your objects. Okay, and just below the X and Y coordinate options here, you'll see these nudge arrows, okay? And these nudge arrows with your element selected, when you click on them, it'll actually move your element one one hundredth of an inch, okay, for each time that you click on these. So this is just for a very precise movement. Because if you take and try to move it yourself, okay, it looks like I'm moving it about two hundredths of an inch, okay, so this is a little bit more precise, 
and below that you've got your horizontal align. Okay, this is going to horizontally align it to the left, to the center, and to the right. Here's your vertical align. We'll align it vertically at the top, middle, and the bottom. All right, so below the horizontal and vertical align buttons, you'll see the width and the height section here. And this is basically telling us the actual width and height for the element that we have selected. Okay, so what we can do is we can go in and manually alter these settings by clicking here. Okay or we can type in the values that we want. And now more importantly, this little button here, this Keep Proportions button, when we have this checked, we can utilize it in two different ways. One is if we actually resize it using this handle, it will make sure that it stays in proportion. Okay, so when we drag it, it will equally increase the width and the height. Now watch what happens when I uncheck this. When I uncheck it, it's no longer locked in proportion, so I can take it and I can skew it. I can make it taller and skinnier, I can make it fatter and wider. But with Keep Proportions checked, it will keep it in proportion. No matter what I try to do, it will increase and decrease the width and the height together. Okay, now you can use this another way too. With Keep Proportions checked here, you can actually type in a value, like four, and when I hit Enter, it not only changes the width to 4, but it changes the height to be proportionate with that 4. Okay, so watch again here. If I type in 6, watch the height. As soon as I hit enter, the height changes to 5.29. So the Keep Proportions option is basically going to make sure that the element, when you import it, stays at that same proportion. Okay, and it's up to you on how you want to use it. You can uncheck it if you want to alter your element or keep it checked to make sure that it stays in the way that it was originally designed.